With the recent release of the Aya Neo and even more recent release of the One X Player, a lot of people have been putting the two together because of their similarities. But which one actually is better? I mean, seriously. Taking an initial look at both handhelds is clear that they both take after one another a lot. They share virtually the exact same design with the exception of the color scheme and some other smaller stuff. But firstly, let's take a look at the Aya Neo, which is actually the slightly smaller device at 10 by 4.1 inches, which puts it exactly at one inch smaller in both length and width compared to the One X player. The Neo has a seven inch screen as well, which is very sizable and roughly an inch larger than the Switch's screen for reference sake. As well as that, you'll notice that the Neo has very similar controls as, well, pretty much every other notable handheld out there, and that's because a lot of these newer devices have taken their design hints from the Switch. Both the Neo and One X player share those diagonally placed thumbsticks as well as the left hand D-pad and the mash of buttons on the top right of the controller, which surprise surprise is actually how the Switch Joy-Cons are laid out. However, the Neo does take on some unique functions with the addition of the collection of buttons that sit at the bottom of either controller, which are tailored specifically for Windows 10 functions. Definitely a useful feature, especially considering how fiddly Windows 10 could get on a device this small. The array of functions that the Aya Neo has is for sure a hugely appealing factor over a lot of other handhelds, even the Switch. It gives an experience I feel many of those who've been waiting for the Switch Pro want. That's a lot to do with the fact that it has a fantastic docking system that allows you to connect the device up to multiple different screens, all thanks to the multitude of USB-C ports located on the top of the console, of which two have the ability to export video output onto an external screen. What this means is that you can use the Neo to multitask like a full-on PC or even play in desktop mode across dual screens for a super wide immersive experience. The dock also has enough ports to facilitate a keyboard and mouse as well, I should note. So you really are getting a full on PC experience with the addition of a really great on the go experience too. So how about the One X player then? Well, like mentioned earlier, the controls are almost exactly the same with a minor difference of where the Windows 10 function buttons are placed. The One X has those more evenly placed around either side of the controllers, which I do think makes it a little less fiddly to operate, but that may be down to personal preference. The device as a whole is also bigger all around. It's 11 by 5 inches and an inch thick. The screen is a whopping 8.4 inches or exactly 1.3 inches larger than the Neos, which is good for immersiveness, but maybe not so good if you plan on transporting it around since the larger the device, the less portable it becomes. However, I do think that an 8.4 inch screen is a perfect size in general, so props to the design team there. The actual rubbery material that the One X player is coated in is probably nicer than the standard plastic you get on the Neo because it just makes it that much more grippier. The last thing you want to do is drop your $1,000 handheld. I also found it interesting that it has a kickstand on the back, much like the Switch, although it's actually a functional one since it's placed in the middle rather than being awkwardly positioned on one side. Why Nintendo didn't just do that in the first place, I don't know, but at least the One X team has taken the hint. Perhaps the coolest feature of the One X player is the two USB 4.0 ports because while that doesn't sound all that major, it actually opens up a huge opportunity. As they state on their Indiegogo page, the two ports can connect to an eGPU and an external 4K monitor at the same time, which will allow the user to enjoy an even better gaming experience. Or in short, it means you can transform this into a full-fledged gaming PC. Alongside that is a whole selection of really nifty little features like the fact that it has a fingerprint sensor to unlock it. It has a mini attachable gaming keyboard that's kind of similar to how the Surface Pro keyboards attach, if you know what that looks like. I could go on, but the point is, there are a lot of very cool little features that make the experience so great. Okay, so the functions of each device are remarkably similar, so maybe that's not enough to go on when deciding which one is the better handheld console. To truly know, we need to consider the specifications because they determine how well games run after all. Little spoiler, the One X kinda has better specs, and no, that's not me being biased because the Neo has a lot to offer. But hear me out, 
The One X player is the larger device, so maybe that might mean that it's been able to pack slightly beefier hardware into it, but nevertheless, it has a range of configuration options all revolving around 11th gen Intel CPUs. The cheapest being the 11th gen i5 and the most expensive being an 11th gen i7. Compared to the Neo, which has an AMD Ryzen 4500U, the benefit does lean towards the One X marginally since that i7 is just that bit better. Pair that with the RAM and SSD options and it becomes ever more clear. The Neo has a 500GB SSD option, or a very generous 1TB option as well as 16GB of RAM. That is by no means bad, in fact that's more than enough however, again, the One X just has better options. At the low end it offers 16GB of RAM with 512GB of SSD space, then at the high end you get the same RAM but with 2TB of SSD space. However, where the biggest difference lies is the graphics, not necessarily because of the GPU, although the One X's Intel Iris Xe is better than the AMD Vega 6 and the Neo, but the One X has a significantly better screen. For one, it's over an inch larger, it has a resolution of just over 2K, and it has over 100 more pixels per inch than the Neo screen. It's simply better, but that will absolutely come at the cost of battery life, so perhaps playing at that high of a resolution while on the go may not be the greatest of ideas. Having said that though, the battery is 15,300 milliamps per hour, which is pretty substantial, so even with high resolution and heavy titles, you can still expect a respectable 2 or 3 hours on the go performance. And the Neo is exactly the same, because even though the battery is slightly smaller, it has less demanding hardware. So what's the verdict then? Well, the specifications of each device and how they both handle games can often be two different things because a lot of different factors. But if we're going off what each manufacturer states about their tested gaming performance, we can expect big things. The One X player allegedly achieved 75 to 87 frames per second playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt on the top end model and 83 to 116 on multiplayer games like Rainbow Six Siege. Similarly, on the Aya Neo, the FPS on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt sat around 30 to 45, although that FPS scoring is based on the lowest possible settings so, you know, the performance will decrease as you crank the settings up. That goes for both devices, so performance-wise the One X does seem to have a pretty big advantage over the Neo because it is the better performing and more graphically capable device. When it comes to the nitty gritty features, both handheld devices outperform each other in their own unique ways. For instance, we don't yet know how well dual monitor connectivity will work on the One X, if at all. That's something the Neo has nailed down. Yet equally, the One X has the option to drastically upgrade performance because of its USB 4.0 ports that transform it from a handheld to a pretty good gaming PC. Physically though, I think they're far too similar to be comparable in any way, but purely because of the actual gaming performance and better specifications, I'm leaning more towards the One X over the Aya Neo. I should note though that the One X can cost anywhere between $1,000 to $1,600 depending on the model, so you're really going to need to get those better specs if you opt for the most expensive model, and that's $600 more expensive than the Neo. That's kind of annoying because that means the answer to which one is better comes down to price. How much would you actually be willing to spend on a handheld device and is the better hardware in the One X worth $600 over the Neo? Not to be that guy, but it is down to you for that reason. Anyways, what do you think? Which one would you get if you could? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like the video. Hey, even subscribe if you're feeling generous.